Welcome to Curious Connections. Today we are tackling a topic in chemistry, redox reactions. Chemistry is the study of matter, its properties, structures, compositions, and the different transformations it can undergo. One type of transformation is called a redox reaction. This chemical reaction is fairly common and creates products people use every day. Yet when the right chemicals have a redox reaction, a deadly product can be created. But before we dive into that story, see if you can answer this question. What popular health and beauty product undergoes redox reactions? Think you know the answer? Stay tuned to find out. This is Curious Connections. A while back, I had a homework assignment that asked for an example of a redox reaction. Doing a simple internet search, I came upon many websites that said an excellent example of a redox reaction was hydrofluoric acid. Digging a little deeper, I found this story. In a laboratory, a technician was using hydrofluoric acid to dissolve minerals in sedimentary rock. He accidentally knocked over the hydrofluoric acid and it splashed onto his legs. He was taken to the hospital 30 minutes later, but by this time the acid had already soaked into his skin and was spreading throughout his nervous system. In order to save the rest of his body, his legs were amputated, but he still died a week later. Moral of the story, always wear proper protective gear in a lab. Needless to say, the vast majority of us will not come into contact with hydrofluoric acid. But if you're into alien movies, the green goop that aliens use to melt walls is basically the same chemical as hydrofluoric acid. Pretty crazy story. Even crazier, why is this the example that's always given for redox reactions? Redox reactions are not that dangerous of a phenomenon. Which goes back to our question from earlier. What popular health and beauty product undergoes redox reactions? Need a hint? It's colorful, comes in a box, you can have it professionally done. Figure it out yet? If you guessed hair dye, you were right. People have been dyeing their hair for hundreds of years, and although the chemicals used to dye hair are different, the chemical reactions are still the same. First, let's cover the basics of hair. This is one strand of hair. The cortex is where the pigments that give hair its colors are held. All natural hair colors are created by two melanin pigments, pheomelanin and eumelanin. Different hair colors are created by different concentrations of these two pigments, and gray hair is the absence of both pigments. In order to permanently dye hair, the pheomelanin and eumelanin colors can't outcolor the new dye. How is this prevented? Bleaching. Bleaching hair is the process of breaking the bonds of pheomelanin and eumelanin, which leaves the molecules colorless. Looking at the ingredient list on the box dye, this is done by hydrogen peroxide. Without getting too technical, a redox reaction is shorthand for a reaction that goes through an oxidation reduction process. You have a substance with electrons that gives them to another substance when they react. In the case of hair dye, hydrogen peroxide acts as an oxidizer, taking electrons from the pigments in hair. This process often breaks the bonds in hair pigments, leaving them colorless. The next phase is inserting the new color. Once again, reading the label, you may notice ammonia on the box. Ammonia causes the hair cuticle to swell. That is what allowed hydrogen peroxide to enter and break the melanin bonds. Once the bonds are broken, the new dye can enter the cortex. While the process is not deadly like the story from earlier, gloves still have to be worn by the person who's doing the hair dyeing in order to protect their hands. Whether you're visiting your local chemist at the hair salon or being one yourself, hair dyeing is a whole chemical process. Thanks for watching this episode of Curious Connections. Be sure to like it and subscribe to get all the Curious Connections.